Not only can bugs leave an itchy patch, but they can also cause life-threatening conditions like anaphylaxis, as well as lethal illnesses like dengue or even malaria. In this episode, we discuss how to treat insect bites and stings and anything in between, as well as how to get rid of pests that pose risks to our health. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez and welcome to MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. Let's welcome our guests for this episode. With us is Dr. Jason Arboleda. He's an emergency medicine specialist from Hospital na Makati and Fatima University Medical Center. Also with us is Dr. Jarla Golmatico Flores. She's the Chair of Public Relations and External Affairs of the Philippine Dermatological Society. Let's start our discussion with mosquitoes, which is very common in the Philippines because of the tropical weather here in our country. It's characterized by warm temperatures and rainfall where mosquitoes like to live. And these bloodsuckers are known to carry vector-borne diseases such as dengue, chikungunya, and even malaria. Dr. Jason, umpisa natin kung ano bang ibig sabihin ng vector-borne? Vector-borne means um, parang may carrier. Ano. So the mosquito itself, it needs to contain either the virus or the parasite. So it might get it from another animal, another human being. It takes that, it becomes the vector, and then it passes on to another organism. Now, Dr. Jason, pag-usapan naman natin ng dengue because this is very common na tinatransmit ng mga mosquitoes. Ano? When it comes to dengue, ano yung mga unang signs ng mga pasyenteng pupasok sa ER with dengue? Almost all of the time, they present with fever. Fever, uh, body aches, masama pakiramdam. Yun usually yung mga unang nararamdaman ng mga ano, pasyente na may dengue. Yung mga nose bleeding, yung mga nahihilo, later na yan eh. Pero ang pinakauna talaga nila nararamdaman, most of the time, is the fever. Dr. Jarla, could you talk about the mosquito bites? I'm sure a lot of our viewers have experienced this. But just to be clear, what does a typical mosquito bite look like and how should this be handled? Usually, the mosquitoes and even ticks they're attracted to the skin odors and the carbon dioxide that we usually exhale. So they usually uh, use heat and movement, even the visual cues from us as humans. That's the time they think that you're a possible host. Now, when you see a mosquito bite, this would usually look like a round, a puffy bump forming. In small cases, they usually have small dot on the center. So it's quite red, sometimes it's hard, and there is a small amount of swelling. When it comes to the mosquito bite, one common symptom with this, it's very itchy. What are the risks of those who keep on scratching uh, a mosquito bite? Usually, the patients would tend to scratch it until the itchiness would go away. But the thing is that um, if you keep on scratching it, you might cause what you call the eid reaction. When you say eid reaction, there can be an itchy on, or redness on the part that is not beaten by the mosquito. So usually, we don't really advise patients to keep on scratching it. Or it may cause what? Opening of your skin that might cause another problem, which is bacterial infection. The next insect on our list, ants. These are bright red ants and they have a sting in their bite, equivalent of being burned by a hot object. Now, let's talk about that, Dr. Jason. When it comes to ants, uh, depending on where the ant bites, especially if they bite uh, in the ear because of the chemical that the ant has, napakasakit ito, it is very irritating as well. But what should our viewers understand, especially with insects that enter uh, the ear. Ang unang instinct kasi is to try to ano, eh, try to grab it, mm -hmm. ano, try tanggalin. So usually what that does is it puts not just ants, even things like uh, cockroaches and mites. Ang uh, mangyayari, mas papasok yung insect na yan. So if that happens, it will, pos will cause more problems not just for the patient but also for the uh, medical practitioner who's going to try to remove that insect. We recommend namin usually, and we actually use it in the ER, is baby oil. So it suffocates the insect, uh, it renders, the, renders it immobile. Mas madali tanggalin ang insect kapag ano, hindi na pumipiglas. Since Dr. Jason mentioned, let's talk about cockroaches at uh, this time. Dr. Jarla, when someone is bitten by a cockroach, is there a uh, distinct 
look to this, especially when someone probably was bitten while asleep and then they just see a mark there. Is there anything that our viewers should, should be wary about, especially with larger insects like a cockroach bite? Usually they have to remember that the most common sites of the cockroach bites would be on the mouth, fingers, face, hands, and feet. Why? Because these are the areas are, that we usually eat, use for eating. And then the residues would usually be found on those areas. So that's why the cockroach would you know, tend to go to that area and then tend to bite you. Because if there are no food residues, usually the cockroach won't really that bite. Now, the thing is, the lesions of the cockroach bites would look like they have swelling on that particular area. There's also itchy rashes, and usually the minor complication would arise if you keep on scratching on those areas. So what we usually do if the patients would see that they have cockroach bite, they have to rinse it with water and soap right after the, they saw the bite because cockroach would tend to crawl anywhere mm -hmm. and then this might cause infection later on and further discomfort. When it comes to cockroach bites, mosquito bites, uh, ant bites, Iba iba ba yung treatment ng mga ito or is there uh, one cream to cure them all? For first aid, what we usually tell the patient, since there's a swelling, you can put ice, ice packs, okay? So ice on, ice off. Ice pack for 15 minutes, then ice off for the next 15 minutes. So that was that's the thing they can do. And then they can put calamine lotion because this is an antihistamine cream. So when you say antihistamine cream, this would relieve the itchiness. Because if you actually didn't improve or didn't remove the itchiness on that area, patients might tend to scratch it. Now, patient might self-medicate with antihistamine. They can do that. But uh, they have to take it maybe once a day lang. If it's not effective to them, they have to consult their doctors already. Coming up, we'll discuss more serious pests that may potentially put you at risk. Your health is our mission here on MedTalk Health Talk. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez and welcome back to MedTalk Health Talk, where caring is our calling. Today, we're talking about insect bites and other house pests that pose risks to our health. Now, there are many species of bees, wasps, and even hornets in the country. And it's good to know that they will not sting you unless provoked. Getting stung by these creatures can be very painful and for some, even lethal if they are allergic. It's best to stay away from hives and nests to avoid any stinging. Kapag ang isang tao ay nakagat, those who are stung with this, what should their first aid uh, treatment be? First, try to clean the wound. Soap and water. Some bees leave their stinger mm -hmm. on the skin. So, actually, the bee dies when it, the bee may die when it stings. Because may, may iwan, basically, na open na iwan yung stinger. So, that stinger should be removed. Otherwise, uh, it will continue injecting venom into the body. Once the wound is clean, you can apply topical ointments. Pwede kasi magkaroon ng ano, what we call envenomation. These insects have venom which may cause a fatal allergic reaction called anaphylaxis. What are some of the distinct symptoms that a person is undergoing anaphylactic reaction, Dr. Jason? Anaphylaxis can be manifested in a lot of ways. Ano? Ang pinaka-common dito would be yun, nagkakaroon ng maraming maraming rashes yung patient. Another symptom would be difficulty of breathing. Ano? Nahihirapan huminga. Basically, para, ano, para napupuno yung lalamunan. Actually, that's a danger sign. Ibig sabihin, nagko-close nag up na yung, ano, uh, yung airway. Ano? Uh, at hindi na makakahinga yung patient unless something else is done. Other symptoms for anaphylaxis, surprisingly, vomiting, diarrhea, pwede rin magkaroon ng chest pains. Mm -hmm. So, if a patient that's stung, or actually, yeah, any other allergen, exposed to any allergen, experiences those symptoms, they should go to the emergency room. Now, Dr. Jarla, aside from anaphylaxis, there's also a condition called Stevens-Johnson syndrome. Uh, can this also be caused by insect stings or are other factors uh, involved in this? your skin generally would have a uh, redness okay and then usually it, if it's not treated earlier it can cause uh, blistering 
and then there would be what peeling off your skin or what we call the epidermal attachment so if it's uh, more than 30 percent already we call that toxic epidermal necrolysis so this is quite an emergency case for uh, dermatologists because we have to treat it right away otherwise we couldn't prevent the complications arising from this hypersensitivity reaction. Since we're talking about uh, a lot of these insect bites, one of the really common ones here in the Philippines are bed bugs or ang surot. So when it comes to these bites, are there uh, distinct uh, characteristics of a bite from bed bugs? Because more often than not, we won't be able to observe if a bed bug does bite one of us. It's quite itchy no? when you are usually bitten by the bed bugs. Um, usually, they would just stay as popular vesicles or popular vesicles. But if you keep on scratching it, they would become what you call the will hive or parang urticarial populus. So, pag sabi mo ng urticarial populus, para siyang hive yung um, nagmapamapa na dun sa area. So, kaya nga, usually, we tell the patients do not scratch it because the tendency is that, you know, the swelling would try to um, uh, spread on the area of the skin and this may cause what further problems uh, in the skin later on make sure that uh, you change your linens your beddings at least every week okay so they have to clean it uh, especially the linens the beddings because that's where the bed bugs would usually want to stay now let's move over to snakes here in the philippines uh, there are a lot of snakes venomous and non-venomous ones as well but it's also good to know what to do in case you are presented with one and if you are bitten by one for that matter what should our viewers do when it comes to snakes well if you're bitten by a snake the for some the first instinct is to try and capture the snake okay that's a very bad idea because you might not be able to know if that snake is poisonous or not. So if you want to identify it in this day and age, yeah, every, almost everyone has a smartphone. Picture on you, you know, leave the leave the snake wrangling to the professionals. When you gawin ano sa wound, first is to clean it with some soap and water. Mm -hmm. If there's bleeding, apply some pressure on it. You know? Dun sa mga ginagawa na sisipsipin o kaya lal, ano, hihiwaan tapos papaduguin, okay, uh, hindi totoo yun. Uh, that causes more harm, more problems down the road for uh, medical practitioners who will uh, treat the, the patient. Okay. So after cleaning the wound, if there's uh, no more bleeding, the other things that can be done, the extremity, usually kasi sa ano naman yan, eh, arms or legs na kakagat ng tao, immobilize the part, cause further movement will increase the speed with which the venom reaches the other parts of the body. Okay, So if it's yun, yeah, if there's a neurotoxin, it's going to go to the brain faster. We can put what we call a constriction band. You know? Uh, for uh, those who are familiar with being drawn ng, uh, ng blood, ano, di ba? Parang may naglalagay yung, ano, yung kumukuha ng blood, may dinalagay siyang masikip. Coming up, we'll continue sharing tips on how to keep yourself and your home pest-free. You're watching MedTalk Health Talk. We'll be right back. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and this is MedTalk Health Talk, your partner in healthcare. Now, Dr. Jason, pag-usapan naman natin ang rats because uh, rats are also very common here in the Philippines. And when someone is bitten by a rat or nandaga, one of the fears that they may have is magkaroon sila ng rabies because of the bite of the rat. Now, my question is, Dr. Jason, are rats a common vector for rabies? Rats and mice and hamsters, they don't carry rabies. They can carry out other diseases, but rabies is not one of them. One thing that a person might be given in the ER kapag nakagat siya ng daga is an anti-tetanus shot. What is this shot for, Dr. Jason? And who are those more likely to be given an anti-tetanus shot? It's really more of uh, who's not going to be given anti-tetanus shots. So, ang hindi lang bibigyan ng anti-tetanus shots uh, pag dumating sa ER, especially for, actually for anything, ano, for a wound, a burn, or a bite would be people who have completed their anti-tetanus shots and has had a booster. 
Okay, so yung mga yon hindi na bibigyan. Everyone else needs an anti tetanus shot. It's one of those things that na ane that really proves that an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. Because once clinical tetanus sets in, the muscles of the body starts contracting, and then they stop obeying the orders from the brain. So once the muscles for wearing in for eating, you know, yung mga mouth muscles natin. Or once the muscles for the for breathing they stop obeying the brain, you know, and they they contract on their own. That's going to be lethal. Now, Doctor Jala, when it comes to our skin and kapag ito ay exposed to to insects, insect bites, for that matter, what is a good way to manage this that people can do at home, uh, parents can do this at home that is safe for children as well, while still maintaining that level of safety. To prevent naman the, the insect bites or insect infestation, of course, number one is hygiene. They have to make sure that their body, they, before going to sleep, they have to make sure that there is no food residue. They have to wash themselves properly. They have to change their linens, their bedding, their curtains no? once a week to make sure that they don't have bed bugs. And then they can make use also of repellents because the repellents actually affect the insect's senses. They actually lure the insects that, you know, you have different taste, different uh, smell, and this can actually prevent the insects from biting the humans. But what are effective repellents? What should our viewers watch out for? Is a uh, citronella plant effective, really, in, in, in uh, taking pests uh, uh, at bay? Uh, are those stickers that you can stick on uh, the clothes of children effective ba na repellent ba itong mga to? Or is there a chemical that uh, our viewers should look out for when they are buying their insect repellent? Whether it is a lotion, whether it is a patch, okay? Um, products containing uh, what you read, DEET, okay? So this stands for your N-diethyl metatulamide. So this is an active ingredient that is mostly found in the insect repellent. So this is quite safe even for children so this is also effective as well and before we go any final uh, advice uh, words of advice dr jason to our viewers especially now in the summertime and a lot of people are out and about exposing themselves to bugs and pests avoid uh places uh, and uh environments where these are uh, where these uh mites hornets uh, bees and snakes might be living Okay, so kung merong, for example, may trail, ano, uh, doon na lang siguro kayo sa trail and dot wander off on your own. If you're swimming sa seas, ano, if merong reports na baka may mga jellyfish, uh, med, uh, think, uh, think, maybe think twice before uh, dipping into the water. And then in the event, uh, if you're making travel plans, maybe have an idea if that a facility or that area has a medical facility that can treat or at least give first aid for ano for any eventuality that might happen be it uh beast bites and stings or any other injuries and dr jarla before we go any advice uh, for the viewers especially when it comes to their skin and how to treat any bites make sure that when you have an insect bites okay first and foremost Scratching is not the way to relieve your itchiness. So you have to clean it first. You have to sanitize it. You can put your topical calamine cream if you have at home. Okay. Uh, you can put ice packs. Okay. You can make use of that. But never, never try to scratch it. If it persists, you have to consult your uh, doctor already so that they may give you antihistamine and topical creams that might relieve your symptoms. With that, I'd like to thank emergency medicine specialist Dr. Jason Arboleda and dermatologist Dr. Jarla Flores for being with us today and sharing their tips as well as their expertise. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez and thank you for watching MedTalk Health Talk. We'll see you again next time.